Hi there folks, Michael from First Aid Oils once again and another video in our series of CPR videos. In this case we're looking at CPR for an infant. So we would classify as an infant uh, under the age of one, okay, so effectively a baby. And there's some obvious differences, uh, you know, when we look at the situation here. The main one is obviously the size of the casualty. Uh, many of the guidelines in CPR, however, are consistent with uh, the adult and the child in regards to the rate of uh, compression, uh, the depth of the chest compression and, and so on, uh, two breaths, certain compressions and so forth. All of that is the same, but the critical difference is uh, we're using uh, two fingers rather than one arm or two arms, you know, which is going to be counterproductive or do uh, more harm than good. So in this case, we come across a situation, uh, once again, as we've mentioned in the previous videos, where we've gone through our doctor's A, B, C, D, uh, and in that process we found that at the response stage, the person uh, wasn't conscious. Um, in the case of a baby, how we determine consciousness, uh, consciousness, because the body's a lot smaller, we can uh, lightly tap or, or shake the shoulder, and we can also squeeze the foot or tap the foot, okay? And, and sometimes that will get a response. The baby may start to cry because often at that age, they're not talking yet. Um, so that we would regard that as a response. Uh, in this case, however, for the purpose of CPR, uh, the baby is not responsive. We continue on, obviously at that point we call an ambulance, we call emergency services, and we continue on then to look for any uh, obstruction of the airways. Uh, assuming that we're able to clear that or we didn't find any, then we check for breathing. Uh, where breathing is not present, that's our trigger point for CPR. So breathing not present or, or there's a wheezing, not a clear exchange of gases tells us we need to do CPR. Now, in the case where the baby is lying on the floor, maybe in the cot, maybe you know on the floor they're playing on, on the ground, or what the case might be, or maybe you place them on the floor. The, the head at the moment is, is in a fairly uh, neutral kind of position. So the guideline uh, difference when it comes to the head is that we you know always have said with with the baby no head tilt, but it's more a case of the head being in a neutral position. It can be slightly um, upwards where the nose is pointing to the ceiling, but what we're saying is we don't tilt the head uh, fully back. Uh, it effectively closes the airways in that case, which again is counterproductive. So the guidelines being the same, we would start with uh, two rescue breaths, or we may start with the compressions. As mentioned in the previous video, the key deciding factor would be whether the baby has just stopped breathing. Uh, in this case, there's still some oxygenated blood in the system, we start with the compressions, get that blood moving first. We want to get oxygen to the brain. Remember the primary purpose of CPR is to slow down brain injury, minimize brain injury until uh, the casualty can be defibrillated or the heart restarted through defibrillation. So we want to start that CPR uh, compression process as quickly as possible. However, if we come across a baby and, and find that they're not breathing, we don't know when they took their last breath, it could be an option to do the two breaths first. So neither of those approaches is wrong. Okay, so in the situation where the baby's on the floor, understand that your mouth is quite big in comparison to the baby's face. So your mouth will effectively cover the nose and mouth of the baby. So if I was to do the breath, okay, here, nose, my mouth covers nose and mouth. I want to form a seal. Bear in mind, this, this is a mannequin, okay? So if it was alive, uh, casualty, I would have my gloves, okay, perhaps even a, a mask. I would obviously need to remove it to do the CPR. As a barrier, I may have a, a face mask, so this is an adult version, you have a much smaller one for an infant, um, and the same when it comes to uh, a face shield. But again, you might be in a situation where you weren't expecting to have to do CPR, you don't have any of those things, and I'm sure if it was your baby or your child, uh, you would proceed regardless. The, the, Resuscitation Council uh, advice or guidelines says that even in the absence of barriers, they do uh, encourage you to still do CPR. They say the risk of uh, any harm to yourself is quite low. But again, that's uh, a decision that you need to make, um, particularly in, the, in these COVID times, which I understand people might be a little bit uh, reluctant. Uh, so anyway, so with the baby, guidelines are the same as, as they were for, for child and adult. 30 compressions, two breaths, um, third of the depth of the chest, but we're using two fingers at the uh, just below the nipple line. Okay, and we're pressing again vertically over the top. 
We don't require as much force, okay? We do our 30 compressions, we do our two breaths, and so forth. Same as before, we continue until there's some sign of recovery, until the paramedics arrive and are ready to take over, or until you physically can't continue anymore, or it becomes unsafe to do so. Another option when it comes to uh, performing uh, CPR for a baby is to have the baby cradled in your arm, okay? This is another option, perhaps, if you've taken them out of the bath or something like that, which is quite a common situation where, where babies often require CPR. Um, resting flat in your arm, again, it's in a good position for breathing, nose and mouth, and fingers over the top, and I can get the compressions. Of course, you know, we, we pray that we never have to do this, but this is another option uh, to position the infant uh, for CPR. All right, so at the moment I've been discussing uh, CPR in the absence of defibrillation. Of course, CPR works best when it's done in combination with defibrillation. Now, even with uh, an infant, uh, defibrillation is still uh, advised if you have a defibrillator handy. The key difference would be the size of the pads on the defibrillator. You always get uh, the smaller pads that come with it as well. So use the smaller pads. Uh, rather than front of the chest and side of the body, one would be the front of the chest and directly uh, behind at the back. Uh, but we'll demonstrate that on our defibrillation video. So keep an eye out for that one because CPR works best or the chances of survival for the occasion are best CPR with defibrillation, okay, rather than without. But in the absence of having a defibrillator handy, well, uh, the process for CPR is as we demonstrated. Thank you.